Hello guys, Nathan A here, Nader Animator, Angry Birds Team, whatever you want to call me, I'm going to be posting this on both channels, and I am here today to talk about the Angry Birds Movie 2. Now I had the pleasure of seeing this movie yesterday with my family and stuff, and it was really, really freaking awesome. This review is going to obviously contain spoilers later on in the video, uh, but for this first part I'm just going to give you my uh, general thoughts about the movie and you know what I thought about it from a general audience perspective and then once I get into more of the nitty-gritty and things that I would uh, change about the film I'm going to like put a spoiler warning on the screen and stuff for those of you who don't want to have the film spoiled for you and have already seen it but uh yeah I just wanted to make this video to uh, talk about the Angry Birds movie because I have been like a longtime fan of Angry Birds since 2009 so since the franchise actually started and uh, since I have been a longtime fan I thought that it might be a good idea to get some uh, longtime fan fan perspectives on this movie because I feel like uh, most of the reviews right now on YouTube and uh, IMDb and like um, Rotten Tomatoes and stuff are from people who just saw the movie but weren't entirely invested in the Angry Birds uh, lore and storyline as much as you know longtime fans like I was and so uh, I'm gonna give, be giving you my perspective on that and uh, just my overall thoughts of the movie so uh, what did I think of the movie come from a general audience perspective it was amazing guys like it is definitely if you saw the first movie this is like a huge not just a step up but like a huge just like jump hop and fly up it, it was absolutely amazing like the jokes uh, they were all like hilarious the animation looks almost flawless and like incredibly detailed and also the character work is is amazing like the plot is it's, it's just a really fun family friendly time that I think like the majority of all audience will enjoy and so uh, my review of this film is a uh, 9 out of 10 because it is it's, it's just a really fun time for families and uh, friends and like children all like of all ages to see so uh, if you haven't seen it go see it because uh, it's really fun and you know if you're not as invested in the Angry Birds franchise like I am then yeah it'll still be a very very, very fun movie to see and right now it is probably the best video game um, adaptation of a movie at, like at all like it is which is uh, pretty incredible like for <laughs> for a movie about Angry Birds it's yeah it's, it's, it's a pretty freaking incredible movie and now I'm gonna go into spoiler territory uh, as I now list off a couple of nitpicks I had about the film coming from a long time fanboys uh, perspective of the franchise uh, and so uh, yeah this this next part of the video is going to contain spoilers but uh, if you just came here for the general audience review uh, that's already over so you can click off this video but if you came for my unique perspective on this. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you so much for uh, sticking around. I'll uh, ma make sure you subscribe so you know you don't miss out on more of I guess my content and my perspectives on stuff like this. But uh, yeah, here we go into my thoughts of the Angry Birds movie coming from a uh, fandom, uh, coming from a fanboy's perspective. So uh, there were a couple of things that I was uh, really were really really worried about going into this film, uh, just uh, just based off of seeing the trailers and uh, promotional material and stuff like that. One of those things was uh, the hatchlings. Because if you've been following the Angry Birds um, franchise recently, you would know that like recently they're, they have been like just cramming hatchlings into pretty much everything in their like franchise now. I mean there was like Angry Birds Pop, there was Angry Birds Dream Blast, like all of these different Angry Birds things with the hatchlings where the birds weren't even angry. And it's just like, and they're doing it just because all oh, the hatchlings are so cute and they're all so pretty and I'm like hatchlings, oh, everybody loves hatchlings, oh. and it just got annoying for the majority of us Angry Birds fans to just see hatchlings literally everywhere when we searched Angry Birds and, uh, and it got to the point where hatchlings seemed like they would be like the minions of the Angry Birds franchise and so they were really really getting annoying. However I'm super uh, proud and like glad how they handled the hatchlings 
Hatchlings in this movie because uh, they gave them a little like subplot with like rescuing their little brother uh, and like sister eggs and stuff like that. But uh, I um, but I really liked uh, how they didn't give them too much screen time and they also didn't give them like no screen time at all. They had them in there just the right amount so that you know audiences uh, like like kids and stuff who enjoyed their cute little faces would like get enough screen uh, would get enough you know screen time with them and stuff. Uh, however, you know, a long time uh, Angry Birds fan fans like me wouldn't get mad because they didn't uh, take up the majority of the movie. So I feel like the hatchlings in this movie were balanced like perfectly. They didn't like go all full minions with them. They gave them like a decent side plot and I think it was, I think it added to the movie a lot and made it a lot more enjoyable. And then another thing of course uh, with, with the hatchlings and you know the whole cutesy wootsy thing was you know uh, Zeta's pet dog and the seal who like steals the fish. I felt like uh, from that trailer that they would be a lot more involved in like the story and you know kind of just be characters that popped up you know a lot more in the movie but like literally the dog and the seal only have like three scenes three entire scenes or three entire like moments within the movie and so and honestly I think that's quite enough for like them because in a world where we have like sentient um, walking uh, pigs and birds and stuff it gets kind of confusing when you throw other animals into the mix and so I feel like even though from uh, viewing the ori original trailer um, I felt like you know those characters uh, weren't as necessary to the um to the plot or the story at all, I think they also uh, used those guys very, uh, very efficiently and uh, had them in there, you know, just enough to make it, you know, a fun, family-friendly time. And so uh, that was awesome. But now, now I'm going to be diving into some nitpicks. So. Um, one of the thing, one of the first few problems uh, I have with this movie was uh, with within the first like couple of minutes actually, and that was uh, of course involving the uh, soundtrack. And now I really like because the, there are some things that I like about the soundtrack and other things that like are kind of not as great about the soundtrack. Because like uh, when the film was like opening and stuff, and it had the like Rovio logo appear like above the lake, it had a intro that sounded so similar to the first movie that I felt like that I actually felt like they like put on the wrong movie like it almost felt like the first movie was playing because the soundtrack was so similar to the first one which isn't a bad thing because I like how in some scenes like when the mighty eagle like flew down to save the day and or you know where other birds were like doing their own thing I like how they used uh, they used like familiar themes to like symbolize you know the different uh, characters interacting in like the scenes and stuff like that but I feel like uh, also at the same time they kind of made the soundtrack too similar to the first movie and you know I kind of wish they spiced it up a little bit you know threw, threw some new songs into there I don't know but uh, it was uh, but it was still an enjoyable part of the movie I just yeah it felt really weird within the first few minutes when it like seemed almost a, when the opening was almost exactly like the first one that was that was interesting and I already talked about how the animation was near flawless and it was like the detail on like the feathers and the rocks and the ice was absolutely incredible especially coming from a studio like Sony and stuff who like you who generally doesn't have uh, that much experience with you know high quality animation except for spider-verse and stuff there the, the detail on that animation was absolutely awesome just one thing that I wish they focused more on was scale because I got confused a lot in that movie because Zeta, uh, when she was first introduced, like it seemed like Zeta was like the size of a regular bird on Bird Island. Uh, you know, her scale was like kind of really confusing, and especially when she was standing next to the other eagles. The eagles seemed like they were smaller, and like also when Mighty Eagle is in the cave in the secret meeting, he like, just like seemed smaller than he usually was. Like the Mighty Eagle, he's supposed to be the Mighty Eagle. Like he's supposed to be this like big ginormous enormous like godlike you know bird that's like supposed to be like g like supposed to be like gigantic compared to all of the other birds on Bird Island but like when he was in the like team meeting and like right next to like all the other birds and right next to like Zeta and like all the other ones that he seemed like a lot smaller than uh than what I remember and same with Bomb too Bomb seemed like a lot bigger than like he should have been like if you if you look at like the size of Bomb in 
the Toons uh, version of Angry Birds, and then look at him in the Angry Birds movie. He's he's uh, quite a bit larger than. Um, what his, I think, spoke cannon height is supposed to be, and the eagles, like, there, there are, like, a couple of scenes in the Angry Birds movie where, like, it's just, it's really confusing to tell, like, you know, what's really supposed to be really large and what's supposed to be really small, and one scene that, like, really does set the scale really well is, uh, the end when, like, Mighty Eagle saves, uh, Zeta's daughter, and, like, they have that sort of family bonding moment, and the birds are standing right there. Like, you can clearly see that the birds are small and that Zeta is like this giant eagle type creature you know standing next to the mighty eagle too but it's but it's also just like very very confusing in other scenes because like they it's like in other scenes they just like it just seems like mighty eagle is like a regular bird and he's not a regular bird he's a ginormous like eagle and he's supposed to be giants but like I don't know I really wish they like I don't know established some more like shots that made them seem like giants compared to like the other other birds like I think that would have added to the film because uh, I don't know I think that's that yeah that, that's the, my only like nitpick with the you know, I guess the animation now I'm gonna be going into some story details because although like I said this film was uh, really awesome had some amazing animation the jokes were spot on you know the characters were awesome there was a couple of things I had a problem with uh, when it came to the story and the characters and stuff like that because uh, this story even though it was very very fun and added to the um, Angry Birds universe goes against canon like so so freaking much and so uh, let's start with uh, let's start with uh, Silver so now um, if you're a long time Angry Birds fan like me you would know that uh, the design for Silver in the Angry Birds movie 2 looks absolutely nothing like the in-game version of Silver that like looks like this they like they don't look anything alike and I think that was uh, kind of intentional because like her uh, Silver's characteristics are also not at all uh, what like so we know Silver in the like a game to be because like Silver in the game Tooneverse is like this goofy off the wall kind of like silly you know uh, energetic character who would never be like a serious brainiac and like you know into science and engineering and stuff like that I mean that seems more like a Hal or, da or Dahlia like trait from you know, you know Dahlia from Angry Birds Stella and I feel like if they like maybe swapped out uh, Silver in this movie for like Dahlia or even Ruby they'd be doing a lot of fan service to like the hardcore Angry Birds fans like me because um because, I don't know, I feel like Red and Silver falling in love just, like, also breaks a lot of canon, because, I don't know, if you were, because, uh, like, if you were a long-time Angry Birds fan like me, you would know that, like, Hal and Silver have been, like, the number one ship uh, ever since Angry Birds 2, uh, ever since the Angry Birds 2 game came out and stuff, and even though it's not a canon ship, like, it, it just makes a lot of sense for Silver not to be with Red, because, like, her personality does, does not, like, mix with red or is not the opposite of red like at all in the game world in the movie world they work perfectly like they're like they're like completely the opposite and like they work really really great together in the movie world but in the game world which is the most canon to Angry Birds they don't clash at all and so I kind of wish that uh, even though Silver you know should have been introduced because like you know it was Angry Birds 2 and Angry Birds movie 2 and you know Silver has to be introduced in the sequel I feel like she should have, yeah she should have been like either Ruby because that's uh, Red's girlfriend that was uh, that was uh, introduced in the Angry Birds um, Valentine's Day or Dahlia because Dahlia um, from Angry Birds Stella we've seen is big into science and engineering and all of that you know stuff that the uh, movie Silver was into and so uh, I kind of feel like if she was there that would have worked a, a lot better uh, from my point of view at least. Speaking of Silver and Hal, I feel like, uh, you know, I feel like also like to give more fan service, maybe they should have like had Silver be, like they maybe should have had Silver still be in the Angry Birds movie too, but I feel like she should have been like just somewhere tossed in the background with like Hal getting all like, uh, you know, lovey w you know, lovebird type thing. Maybe, you know, maybe if they were at like the speed dating, you know, maybe we could have seen Hal 
Hal and Silver walking out of there like happy, happily or something. I don't know. I just feel like Hal and Silver in the background would have like worked a lot better than Silver being uh, in that new design and like dating Red. That just, it, it, it's just, it really confuses my uh, over analytical Angry Birds mind. It's, it's really weird. Speaking of Hal, where the heck is, all right, did anybody else notice that like Bubbles was nowhere to be seen in the movie? Like Bubbles, you know the orange bird that puffs up and stuff? Like where is he? Like I know, I know like Smosh uh, like split up and so getting Ian Hecox to come in and like revoice the character would probably be like very difficult to like do for the sequel and stuff but like you could have still like animated him in there somewhere like Bubbles is Hal's best friend like what where is he like oh my gosh that's like ah, it's like this is another thing that like really confused me it's like where's where's my boy Bubbles you know I want I want I want Bubbles and uh now circling back to the hatchlings I know this is kind of a scattered brain review guys and uh I'm sorry about that but uh I just I just have a lot of things I need to like talk about and get off my chest but uh, anyways circling back to the hatchlings uh, I liked their little side plot with you know getting the eggs and stuff and having you know their them be their baby sisters but one thing that really confused me was that if the hatchlings are what they say they are hatchlings aka they just hatched out of their eggs and they are a baby birds how then is it possible for them to have baby sisters and brothers that are more babies than the baby birds <laughs> that's like like, like, what? That, I don't know, that just really confused me. I mean, obviously, you know, it's uh, so, you know, they can advertise the film with all these cute little, you know, birds and have their big cute eyes and stuff like that and their little floofs and stuff. But, and, I don't know, but like from a logical like perspective, it's it's really weird that like the eggs hatched and they're like, they're, I mean, the, the, I don't know, I kind of wish that like the hatchlings that were going on to like get the eggs and stuff, maybe that they were a little bit bigger or more developed you know, if they were getting baby hatchling type, you know, brothers and sisters or whatever, because I don't know, it just, it just felt really weird to have like younger versions of the youngest version of the Angry Birds, of the Angry Birds species. It's just, I don't know, it was, it was really weird to me. And now, um, and now I'm going to be complaining a bit about the pigs. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, the pigs. I, I said this movie breaks canon before, and that happens a lot with the birds, but that doesn't happen nearly enough times as it does with the pigs. If you're a hardcore Angry Birds fan, uh, fanboy like me, you would know that Leonard is uh, King Mudbeard, and King Mudbeard is the father to King Smooth Cheeks, which if you don't know is the original King Pig that was in the Angry, which was uh, in Angry Birds 1 throughout like all of, you know, the entire Angry Birds franchise, you know, the original King Pig is the son of King Mudbeard that is like, uh, that was in all of the Angry Birds movies and stuff. And so um, for the rest of the video, I'm going to be referring to King Pig as King Smooth Cheeks and uh, Leonard as King Mudbeard, just so I don't get them like confused and stuff like that but uh yeah so but yeah according to like the wiki and all of that king mudbeard is the father to king smooth cheeks and the reason why this is so important is because in angry birds 2 when silver first shows up and when she's like hatched into like the pig castle and stuff like that like the king the current king when silver is hatched is king smooth cheeks not king mudbeard like in the angry birds movie king smooth cheeks is the king and so i feel like uh, if they really wanted to like, you know, treat the fandom with like respect and stuff, I really feel like they should have had King Smooth Cheeks be the king in, you know, this movie and maybe even the, the first, and maybe even like the first movie as well and stuff because like, uh, because like it, it, it just breaks canon that they're not this, that they're not like the same and like, and they could have given like King Smooth Cheeks the same personality as, you know, King Mudbeard and heck, it, it would probably even be fine if like, Bill Hader like voiced King Smooth Cheeks and King Mudbeard. I mean, honestly, I wouldn't even care. Like, as just as long as it was the right character in the right place at the right time, because like the entire movie, I was wondering like this is like uh, the entire movie, I was thinking like this is 
is going so against canon because like the adventure probably with the birds and the pigs you know reuniting and you know getting you know Zeta to go back with Mighty Eagle and like all of that stuff it probably could have existed in the Angry Birds uh, universe and the Angry Birds canon but the thing is though that like that they could have existed with King Smooth Cheeks as the king because he's supposed to be the current king of the pigs and it's so confusing. <laughs> uh, and another thing that like really confused me was that like the sidekick Courtney in that movie, she was a great asset with like her headphones and like all that stuff. She was like really cute. But, but one thing that confused me was that like, okay, she's there, but where the heck did Ross go? Like, you remember Angry Birds 1, the freckle pig Ross who was like pressing the buttons and stuff and the sidekick to like King, King Mudbeard? Like, where did he go? Like, I feel like they could have kept Courtney in this movie if only they switched out King Mudbeard with King Smooth Cheeks. Like, I think that would have like that would have like made things make a lot more sense. Not only for an Angry Birds fanboy's perspective, but like also for like any other like general audience member who actually paid attention to the characters and stuff. Because like King, like like where did Ross go? I want my boy Ross. Where is Ross? And now going on to like. A different character, uh, Gary. Like, I really loved Gary. Like, his whole, like, gadget place and, like, his whole lab was awesome. And I can see how they, um, kind of took some characteristics from the, uh, Angry Birds tunes and, uh, games Professor Pig and put them into Gary. I like how they did that. I just kind of feel like they should have put more, like, more of Professor Pig into, uh, Gary. And, like, I know that's really a hard thing to do because, you know, Gary's supposed to be, like, this young engineering type dude but like if they like if the team really needed an engineer why not just get like Gary to be their main guy and like or maybe just have him be pr professor pig and then like I don't know have another side plot where like the where it's revealed later that like he uh, he actually hatched an egg in his lab and that egg was like the egg for silver and stuff. It would just, it would work so much with the pre-existing content that we have for the Angry Birds universe and stuff because that's because that's how that happened. That's how silver came into the Angry Birds universe. It was an egg that was hatched like by, in Professor Pig's lab or by Professor Pig and like raised by Professor Pig and then released back out of the Angry Birds world and so like, <sighs> another thing that I have with like the pigs and stuff is that like I feel like they, they hinted at this a little bit in the movie where like the hatchlings washed up on Piggy Island and then you know they partner with the little uh, small piglets and stuff like that and they were like oh this isn't Piggy Island or this isn't Bird Island Pig Piggy Island ha 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 I feel like and uh, that was I feel like the birds should have moved like over to Piggy Island like right after the first asteroid like hit their island because like I think it was really tragic when, when you know the a uh, whole mighty eagle mountain got destroyed and like you know the birds were all like uh, you know screaming in chaos and stuff like that but I feel like they should have like just you know evacuated at that moment to go to Piggy Island and you know like use the truce that was already existing there to like you know kind of uh, go and establish themselves somewhere like you know near bamboo forest or where we find them later in Angry Birds tunes and stuff because that would explain uh, why in the Angry Birds tunes and game universes all the birds are living on Piggy Island and not on their pre-existing Bird Island because you know Bird Island would be destroyed and stuff and so that I think that would make a lot more sense just so it would like connect everything and stuff and then with that I feel like if they really were going to have this movie movie and have the other movies uh, set up the origins of Angry Birds and like stuff like that. I feel like they should have had the pigs and birds like break their truce at the end because I know I know they were trying to spread the message of like oh teamwork and you know you've got to work together and friendship and la -di -da, -di da dance all together but like this is Angry Birds we're talking about okay? Birds and pigs do not get along period and so I feel like yeah, I don't know, at the end they should have like had some you know maybe just a prank war going on or something, you know, so the birds and pigs could still live on Piggy Island in peace and stuff, but would have, you know, the whole, like, egg feud going on, which would lead perfectly, actually, into the Angry Birds uh, tunes and stuff, because, um, and not only would, you know, 
the birds and pigs fighting each other and lead perfectly into Angry Birds tunes, but like also the plot with Mighty Eagle. That would also explain why the Mighty Eagle and Angry Birds tunes and Angry Birds uh, and the Angry Birds game is so drastically different personality-wise from the Mighty Eagle and that we see in the movies and stuff. Because uh, the Mighty Eagle and like the tunes and the comics and all that is this big, wise like professor thing that you know uh, that's you know there and like a huge role model for the blues and like all of the other uh, birds that are there on Piggy Island. But like in the movie, he's just this big, cocky, arrogant, you know, like jerk and stuff. Uh, but I feel like if this movie was, you know, to, to set up the, you know, plot of the birds and pigs living on Piggy Island, uh, then I feel like, you know, the story with, uh, with Zeta and like the Mighty Eagle falling in love would like kind of warp, not warp, it would change Mighty Eagle's personality uh, to be less full of himself and more, you know, offering to help other people and stuff. Because, like, he, because Mighty Eagle, he's seen, like, you know, helping people uh, a lot in this movie. But, like, I feel like uh, if Zeta, like, was, but I feel like, you know, if Zeta was there helping him along, you know, to become this wise old, you know, man that he is in, like, the tunes and stuff, it would have, it would have set it up, like, so perfectly and stuff. So, I don't know. I, I don't know. There's just a couple of, like, plot holes that, like, I just... Ah, there's just a couple of things about this movie that like I just really need to talk about you guys like about and just you know get off my chest and so I don't know how long this video is going to be because I still have like a lot of editing and stuff to do on it but uh yeah it, but uh, all in all guys like I said this movie was uh, pretty dang amazing it was a great fa uh, family fu fun experience but it broke canon like so so many times and so uh, I feel like if they just added these minor, minor little changes, like, you know, switched silver with Dahlia, made, uh, made the birds, you know, move back on to Piggy Island, and had King Mudbeard switched out for King Smooth Cheeks, I feel like it would have made this movie just that little tiny bit better. But, uh, but like I said, from a general audience perspective, who doesn't really know that much about, you know, the characters and the old Angry Birds movie, uh, and the whole Angry Birds, uh, universe and stuff, I feel like this movie was very, very well made like and was a really really awesome movie and yeah like I said probably one of the best video game movies to ever exist so uh, if you guys agree with me then uh, be sure to give the video a big fat thumbs up down below and uh, comment what you think what you thought about the Angry Birds movie too uh, but yeah that is pretty much it for this video guys thank you for sitting and listening to me uh, rant slash talk about the Angry Birds movie for this long and so uh, but yeah that is pretty much it for this video uh, thanks again for watching and uh, I will see you guys in my next video, whatever that will be. I don't, I don't really know, whatever, well, whatever channel it will be on. But yeah, that is it, and I will see you guys later. Good.